Welcome to the party. I'm Sam Ekstrom of Locked On Sports Minnesota. We're assembling a Viking super team today and looking back on a disastrous draft class. It's a Reggie Wilson Wednesday on the football party next. Locked On Sports Minnesota podcast. It's endless Minnesota Vikings talk with the diverse voices of your local experts. It's time for the Minnesota football party. It's your guys hanging out talking next level Vikings football. So join in with Pro Football Network's Arif Hassan, Locked On Vikings Luke Braun, Superior Sports Talk's Luke Inman, and Vikings Insider Sam Ekstrom, plus the biggest names in Minnesota football for the Minnesota Football Party. And it starts now. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome in. It's another episode of the Minnesota Football Party on Locked On Sports Minnesota. I'm Sam Ekstrom. You're covering the Vikings with Locked On Sports Minnesota, joined by Luke Inman, the usual sidekick. He's at Luke underscore Spinman. He authors the NFL Draft Buzz newsletter for Locked On. Subscribe to that, by the way, for free at LockedOnPodcast.com slash newsletters. Every Wednesday, we're joined by Reggie Wilson, the CARE 11 sports anchor, sports director. He's at Reggie Wilson TV. And today, we're going to assemble a Viking super team, uh, cherry-picking players from other NFC franchises. We're going to talk about the Vikings' top roster bubble guys that uh, that go into training camp kind of on the, on the chopping block. And we're going to look back. This is a topic just for you, Luke Inman. The disastrous 2021 draft class that has really put the Vikings in a bind where they don't have a deep pipeline of young talents. And I think that draft class is a big reason why all of that on today's show. But first, we're brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook partner of Locked On. Make every moment more with FanDuel.com slash Locked On and go there to get started. Luke, Reggie. We are in the quote-unquote summer abyss. A, it's the, the longest day of the year, and it is officially summer now as the solstice has arrived. We're still waiting on Vikings training camp about five weeks away. So I love this question from Maurice. This is like the best off-season question you can ask because it's time-consuming, it's creative, it's going to make us think, it's going to make us talk, and uh, hopefully it, uh, it you know gets us to segment two. So from Maurice... We start with this. If you could make take one player from each NFC team and have them join the Vikings, how would the team look? Now, I'll preface it by saying this is maybe a better exercise as a written article because you do have to kind of jigsaw this together and figure out like where the best pieces come. Like, do you want to take a cornerback here, an edge rusher here, quarterback here? But um, top of head, NFC talents, who are you immediately selecting to join this Minnesota Vikings team? Reg, what do you think? All right, this is fun. Shout out Maurice for that. Um, all right, so I'm looking at teams now, okay? Philadelphia Eagles. That's a tough one. That's really a tough one. I'll go I'll go big play slay. They need they need some cornerback help, right? All right. Uh, San Francisco 49ers, of course, I'm just going to go Bosa. I mean, come on. You got to do Bosa. You got to get uh, that yeah. edge rusher. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the Packers. Uh, maybe I'll go Aaron Jones. Maybe I'll go Aaron Jones. Um, okay. Bring a, that's a pricey running back, Reg. They just got rid of one. You want to bring another one in? Hey, look. Co- this, contract this is- comes with them. This is a super team. Are, are we, are <laughs> All we right. messing with, with salary caps too? Because nobody has time for those games. We're not yeah, you're probably you're, you're right. If we're doing this, we can't. Yeah, we can't do cap. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we'll do from the Bears. We'll go. We'll we'll go Justin Fields. We'll do that. Um, with the Lions, give me. Uh, oh, this is tough. Give me Aiden Hutchinson. You you can never have too many. Yeah. You know. Uh, the Seahawks. So, so you're making Justin Fields your quarterback, like that? Is yeah. that your? Yeah, that's interesting. Absolutely. That, Absolutely. No, let's let let's talk about that. So you you've looked at all all the NFC quarterbacks, and you've you've hitched your wagon to Justin Fields. 
Yeah, I just think him and Kevin O'Connell's offense, he hasn't had a, a quarterback in Minnesota that can do the things that Fields can do. The ability to make things happen, extend plays, move around with his legs, maybe take one 60, 70, 80 yards to the house with his legs as well. Like that makes the offense that much more dynamic. And I just, I believe in Fields and he could have been a Viking uh, before the Bears snatched him up, but you know, we won't go there. Um, the the Seahawks. Now, this is a tough one because they have talent everywhere. But if I'm thinking Seattle, I'm thinking DK. We'll take DK Metcalf. Uh, okay. The Giants. Maybe I'm picking someone off the Giants offensive line, like their, their left tackle. Maybe, maybe I want one of their left tackles. How about that? How um, about that? <laughs> Who is, is their it, left tackle? Is it Andrew, Andrew Thomas? Thomas? Yeah. Let me get him. Let me get that. I want uh, John Michael Schmitz. That's my guy off the Giants. Oh, there you go. Okay. Uh, the Rams. Huh. I don't know. I, I think you, you have to go Aaron Donald here. Donald. Come yeah. on. I don't care if he's old, Donald. Stop playing. Give, is give he old? How old is he now? 31? 33. 33? Yeah. That happened quick. Yeah. He's still the best, in still my opinion, the best defender in the league. So Still a beast. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the Falcons. Like, who would you? who do you guys want from the Falcons? I would look at Kyle Pitts, maybe okay. the rookie Bijan Robinson, Bijan. but you already took Aaron Jones. Yeah, I took Aaron Jones already. Uh, is Matthew still there? Yeah, he is. He's still yeah, kicking it. Yeah, maybe I do that. Uh, but then now, you know, if, if Darisaw's there, I, I don't know how this game works. <laughs> like, are, are we swapping players that, that are already at those positions? Like, Maurice didn't give us any rules, man. This is chaos. This is just absolute chaos. anarchy. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and and there's still so many teams like with Washington. Uh, maybe maybe I take Scary Terry, uh, New Orleans. Uh, I don't know. I, I took Aaron Jones, so Alvin Kamara is probably off the table. I really do like the the kid from Ohio State, the wide receiver, um, Olave. Yeah, Chris Olave. Mm -hmm. So maybe I go there as well. Uh, the Panthers. Uh, Brian Burns, maybe. I like Burns. Uh, yeah, Burns is a stud. Burns yeah. is a stud. Uh, Tampa. Uh, Mike Evans, maybe. I don't. I don't know who I would necessarily take from them. And then Arizona. Um, give me Buddha. Give me Buddha Baker from them. Mm. And uh, not, not many to choose from. Yeah, I think, I think way. that's about. I think that's about it. There's, there's. Yeah, no you, you you covered a lot of ground there. Yeah. Um, L Luke, first, first, uh, gut reaction to Reggie's choices. Are do you agree with a lot of those? Do you want to go in a diff different direction? I think it all starts at the quarterback. I was surprised he went with uh, big play Slay, not because Slay isn't one of the better cornerbacks, but Jalen Hurts is sitting out there to go with Fields. That tells me Reggie's looking bigger picture. He's looking aerial view. Hurts is going to get you some production, obviously, these first few years. But Fields, we don't know yet. Jury's still out. Fields could end up being a better quarterback than Jalen Hurts when this is all said and done three, four, five years from now. That was probably the most surprising for me. Who'd you take for the Cowboys again? Because I would go Micah. I'm just looking at the top talent available, and I'm looking at Micah and Nick Bosa in the NFC. I didn't do Cowboys, but give me Diggs. Yeah, and, Diggs would be a good one as well. You need somebody on the other side of, of Slay. It's funny, once you get down to those last three or four teams, though, Reggie kind of struggled to get through, like, the Bucks, the Saints, the Cardinals especially. Some of those teams, man, and we'll see what happens. There's a lot of parity in the NFL, but they already feel like they're going to be at the bottom of the barrel uh, in the NFC, which in NFC, that is pretty wide open, all things considering, going into 2023. But I would start with Hurts. That's my quarterback for Philly. Tough to pass up on a guy like A.J. Brown or even Devontae Smith. Heck, the whole offensive line you could probably consider as well. Micah Parsons for the Cowboys. Nick Bosa for the Niners. I feel like I got my two stud mm -hmm. edge rushers. The Giants, I would probably go inside defensive line. Dexter Lawrence all of a sudden becoming one of the best defensive tackles in the league. Washington's tough. 
I think I'd go scary, Terry. I'm with Reg. Get that first wide receiver off the board. The Bears, I'd probably go DJ Moore, to be honest. I know they've added some free agent help, Tremaine Edmonds. They got the two young secondary kids, Jaquan Briskert, starting to show out, Kyle Gordon. But I'd go DJ Moore. I got my two wideouts there with Scary Terry and DJ Moore. The Lions, I probably need an offensive lineman. Penny Sewell, one of the best young offensive tackles in the league. Packers, give me Jair Alexander. Get that shut yeah. down corner. Falcons, that one's tough. Not much on the defensive side of the ball. Fewest sacks in the league, actually, last year. But on offense, I think I'd go Kyle Pitts. Try to tap into something in that passing game. Panthers, I'd probably go Burns as well. But J.C. Horn, who's that safety who's had like two scooping scores on the Vikes? uh, Jeremy Chin. Jeremy Chin. Yeah, he's a stud as well. Give me Burns, though. I'm just going to keep adding elite edge rushers and just let Brian Flores figure it out. New Orleans Saints, I think I'd go, I think I'll go Marshawn Lattimore. I think I'd pair up Lattimore with Jair Alexander. The Bucks, give me Tristan Wirf, still young, still one of the better young up and coming tackles. I got him and Penny Sewell to tag up with. Darius, uh, I don't know. Again, KOC, figure it out. Just find a spot for these three great offensive linemen. Cardinals, man. Cardinals is tough. Who'd you take, Reg? I took Buddha. 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 Yeah, Buddha's probably the best pick there. Paris Johnson, the rookie, if I want to go out on a limb, a top 10 pick. Yeah, give me Buddha. Give me Buddha. I'll keep adding to that secondary. Marquise Brown may be an option, but man, Cardinals looking thin over there. Rams, no brainer. Aaron Donald. Seahawks is a tough one as well. Tariq Woolen. Maybe I'm just going with a great nickel defense with Jair, uh, Lattimore, and Tariq Woolen. And then I already picked Bosa for the Niners. So I feel pretty good about that top to bottom, Sam. Yeah, I like it too. I mean, I, I have a hard time separating the Vikings' current roster from from this conversation. Like, I, I would definitely hang on to the tackles, I think. I don't think I would I would select any tackles. I like O'Neal and Darisa. I'd probably get two receivers to as upgrades over Osborne and Addison, and then those guys become your four and five. So I would find two receivers in the mix. I think we settled on Scary Terry being a nice option. Uh, both of you recommended him. You could also go Drake London uh, if you you know wanted to find someone else from the Falcons. I think Drake London's a nice young option. Um, neither of you really found an inside linebacker to kind of like bolster that group. Maybe Demario Davis is he still in his prime? I don't know if Demario is uh, is still playing as well as he used to, but um, that'd be a nice one from the Saints. And at cornerback, you guys nailed it. I mean, you got to get Jair in there. You got to get, um, who'd you say, Tariq Woolen, Luke? Yeah, I took Tariq Woolen and I took Lattimore. I'm just going, I'm just balling out in that nick. You mentioned linebacker. I thought about Devin White for the Bucks or Levante David, um, but mm-hmm. can't go wrong with Demario Davis either. That's a good pick. Yeah, no doubt. Um, yeah, I don't need to go down the list again. I think you guys really hit, you know, kind of the, the high points here, but. If you think about this, like if you had time to sit down and write the article out and really piece it together, and if you really wanted to challenge, could you stay cap compliant uh, by doing it too? Then you'd really prioritize the rookies. You'd prioritize the Justin Fields, Reggie. And see, see, see. What's interesting is that if you look around the NFC at the quarterback position, other than Hurts there aren't a lot of obvious upgrades like that. We didn't, our brains didn't immediately go to, well, we got to go get this guy to upgrade over cousins. There's just not that many in the NFC. It's uh, it's crazy. The landscape at quarterback and kind of the, the, the rare position Kirk cousins finds himself in as a top three quarterback in this conference. That's the, that's why this team has hope this year with a horrible defense on paper, and, you know, a bunch of pieces gone. Everything's turned over, it seems like. Um, you still have hope because you have Kirk Cousins in a bad conference. Um, I was talking with a buddy yesterday, too, about this Green Bay Packers QB situation. Like, is it, aren't they in a really weird spot, you guys? Like, Jordan Love has to prove himself basically this year. And then they've got to make a decision on his money. Like, they're, they're probably going to have to extend him after this season. So what if he goes like seven and 10? Like, what if he's just very mediocre? What is Green Bay going to do at quarterback? That to me is a huge storyline. 
I'm just throwing this, you know, stream of consciousness at you guys. But the the future at quarterback for Green Bay, Luke, is like the biggest story to me in this division. Oh, it's definitely one of the top five, I think, in the entire NFC for sure, to risk moving on from Aaron Rodgers and then putting in all your chips in the middle of the table on Jordan Love, pretty much an unknown at this point. Clearly, they know a lot more behind the scenes. They know what he's looked like at practice. The teammates have played with him on the second team for, what, three years now. But I think Jordan Love, what what makes it the most interesting, you're right, Sam, if, if they go 500 or maybe a little below that, it's a loaded quarterback class. And I know it's early, but there are so many quarterbacks. We've talked about it on this show just a few weeks ago, not just the top two. Oh, I got to have a top two pick, number one or number two overall with Drake May or Caleb Williams. Michael Penix Jr., Washington, Ewers from Texas. There's tons of them, and it's going to be awfully tempting, I think, if the Packers are sitting there in the middle teens or early teens, something like that, and all of a sudden a quarterback just falls in their lap if they're coming off a 7-10 and 10 season with Jordan Love. But this could go one of two ways for sure. This is going to kind of, I think, steer the direction for the Packers' future, not just this year, but in 2024, 2025, and beyond. Yeah, Reg, Jordan Love, any thoughts um, on what kind of this season represents for him? Got to give him a chance. You know what's interesting? Um, Aaron Rodgers didn't exactly light it up in his first year as a starter as well, but he showed some promise. And I think if Love is able to do that, show some promise. I mean, he has shown some flashes in some of the games that he's come into like relief for Aaron Rodgers and, and played. I, I remember the game that he had against the Lions. Um, he has some skills, obviously, it's just tough, man, especially when you think about Green Bay the last, like, two decades, really, of stability that they've had at the quarterback position. And then to have such uncertainty, um, you would think you can't just continue to, you know, just strike fire hit after hit after hit on a quarterback. Like, that just doesn't happen in the league, you know? Uh, it's just – It's just tough to do that. You look at, you know, teams like the Patriots. They had Tom Brady for all those years. And then after Brady, it's been a little bit of a struggle. People are not really sure what to think of mac and cheese this year. And so I I don't know. that that, That's a tough one, man. You go from Favre. (laughs) Yeah, mac and cheese. He's always going to be mac and cheese to me. Uh, You go from Favre Mm. to Rodgers and now Love, and you're just like, I don't know. I think, like, best case scenario, they they – You know, last year they showed that they were going all in on defense. And I think last year the the team didn't look how they thought that it probably should, especially after they, you know, lost in that playoff game to San Francisco. That was an ugly loss in the playoffs. And they kind of reacted to that to kind of build a team that would just be a little bit more well-balanced overall. And I don't think they gave Aaron Rodgers enough weapons on the offensive side. And so now – didn't really do a whole lot. Like, I, I think Christian Watson is going to, you know, continue to ascend and all that. But, like, didn't really do a whole lot to necessarily help Jordan Love. You didn't really get him that dominant alpha receiver that, you know, when chips are down, he can just throw it to him and and move the chains. But I think they're going to try to be a little bit more balanced. You got the two-headed monster with Jones and Dylan, And, you know, you, you can – Hit the home run with Christian Watson. I think they're expecting Romeo Dobbs to take a, a step forward as well. So there are some pieces in place, but I kind of feel like how you feel, Sam, like it's going to be like a 7-10 and 10 type season. And then you're like, dang, like did he show us enough promise that we are going to hang on to him and maybe, mm-hmm. you know, upgrade the weapons around him and think that maybe he can take a step forward. Like this is not one of those things where unless he just comes in and stinks up the joint, you know, like, like Arizona Cardinals in that Sam Bradford year, yeah. like unless he just stinks up the joint, like, and, and he's like Josh Rosen or something. I, I don't know that you necessarily use this one year sample size to make a determination like is he the guy is he not like kind of have to give it at least two I feel like especially with the investment that they made that's kind of why I don't understand why San Francisco is playing some of the shenanigans that they are they traded up for Trey Lance and they're like oh but Sam Darnold looks good right now you're like come on man if Trey's healthy let him play like you invested in him I understand Purdy came on he may or may not be ready for the start of the season with that elbow 
see what that investment is like because he broke his leg so so early into the season last year. You just really didn't get a chance to see him become a gamer at all. I, I think we're going to see a San Francisco quarterback trade before the season. I, I really do. I feel strongly about that. Um, what Quick guessing game here, since we're talking team personnel. Uh, CBS Sports, one non-quarterback that each NFL team can't afford to lose, and I, I assume that means get hurt. Um, do you want to guess who the NFC North players are that teams can't afford to lose? Uh, Chicago Bears, who do you think it is? Non quarterbacks. Oh, non quarterback. Non -quarterback. Uh, DJ Moore. Correct. Correct. Oh, DJ Moore. very good. Okay. <laughs> very good. On the board, uh, Luke. Take that. De Detroit oh, Lions. Take that. Detroit Lions non court. Uh, God, I want to say Aiden Hutchinson, but I don't think that's it. Maybe Penny Sewell or Amon Ross St. Brown. All right, I'll stop. I'm already. Pen I've already said three names. I'll stop. It, it's Penny. It's Penny. Yeah. Yeah, well done. He's that well good done. when he's catching he's, passes out of the he's backfield. That good. You can't, you know, you yeah. can't lose Packers, that guy. I'm going to say Jair, just because ha having a shut down cornerback you can leave out on an island is just so beneficial for a defense. Reggie, you want to guess on the Packers? Packers. Um, non quarterback. Uh, maybe uh, Aaron Jones? Christian Watson. Wow. Well, I, I mean, suppose we were just talking guy. about Jordan yeah. Love and, and, you know, he needs more help surrounded by him. And Christian Watson clearly is that wide receiver one. Without him, you're relying on a lot of young guys with dubs and then rookies. They drafted two tight ends, Tucker Craft and the other kid, and then um, Jaden Reed in the second round for Michigan State, too. So without Christian Watson, man, that gets thin really quick with a lot of inexperience. So I guess that makes sense. I thought it would be Jair, though. Yeah. Vikings, you don't need three guesses for this one. Justin Jefferson, are you done? C You're done. J the hammer. <laughs> Ham. Correct. It's JJ. Uh, after this, we'll talk about top roster bubble guys on the Minnesota Vikings. But first, FanDuel brings us today's show. The Minnesota Twins, they're just favorites every night for some reason. Um, and that includes tonight. Sonny Gray on the mound. I guess that makes sense. Twins are minus 124 to win the game at FanDuel. Run line, to, so to win by two or more, plus 150. You can bet on that and all the run lines, all the money lines, all the over-unders at FanDuel.com. Backslash locked on to get started. New customers get up to a thousand dollars back in bonus bets if their first bet doesn't win. Check out fanduel.com slash locked on to get started at FanDuel, where they have great promotions. The app is easy to use. The FanDuel Sportsbook app. You get paid instantly when you win. Check out those major league baseball lines. FanDuel is an official partner of Major League Baseball. Major League Baseball trademarks used with permission. All right, guys, let's talk bubbles. The Minnesota Vikings uh, training camp will lead to a bunch of compelling, I think, uh, roster battles. Who are you circling as a bubble guy? Who's on the chopping block? Who do you think is on the brink of making or missing this team? Luke Inman, we start with you. Well, last year they kept five wide receivers. This year, if we just go off those same numbers, circling Jalen Rager, as crazy as it sounds, they brought in Brandon Powell to compete with him, not just as a wide receiver, but more importantly, as a punt return man. And then with Jalen Naylor stepping up in a big way, obviously you got the big three with J.J. Addison and K.J. Osborne. That's your five right there, real quick. And that's without somebody else taking a big leap, like Tristan Jackson, Blake Pearl, Thomas there. Could be anybody. Um, so Jalen Rager's the big one that I circle. And then sifting through these position groups and just going off what they kept last year, they kept six defensive linemen. So that's not including edge rushers, but six D linemen last year. If they keep six again, you got your big three starters, Dean Lowry, Tonga, Harrison Phillips. You know they're going to keep the rookie, Jaqueline Roy. Adam Awo, he's in. That's five already. So you've got Blacklock, James Lynch, Jonathan Bullard, and then a couple other young rookies for that last one spot. That seems like they're going to have to cut some ties with some guys who have been around the block a little bit or made an impact last year at some point on the season, like a Jonathan Bullard being that veteran leader. So that's going to be really interesting, too. It seems like that top five is kind of set in stone. 
Yeah, I'm with you. That defensive line looks really muddled. And I always tend to look to who is on the last year of their deal. Like James Lynch, last year of a rookie contract, he hasn't really overwhelmed us at any point. Uh, someone like that could be on the bubble. I, I wonder about DJ Wanham. Like he, he has been with the ones in Daniil Hunter's absence. Are they committed to DJ Wanham as, as their edge guy? Or might they turn to somebody like Andre Carter, uh, Luigi Villain? Like, could they steal a DJ Wanham spot if DJ Wanham has kind of a mediocre training camp preseason? Um, I, I did think DJ Wanham guys got a little better last year, but I don't think he is a game changing edge rusher. I don't know if his ceiling is all that high. Wanham is still on the bubble to me, even though he's been running with the ones. Uh, we've seen more than one time guys get reps with the ones and then not make the team. So I I would put Wanham on notice. I'm not sure that he's a complete lock on this team. Reggie, your, your thoughts on the bubble? So Luke stole mine. I, I think I was going to go Jalen Rager. It was interesting uh, at camp kind of seeing Rager kind of mix it in you know, with the ones and kind of take some snaps at receiver. We really didn't see him much as a receiver last year, unless it was kind of on those gadget plays, you know, send him on a go route, maybe as a decoy or as a burner type, you know, that Deshaun Jackson type guy, you know, thinking back to like the Rams offense and and all that. Um, and so you, you kind of see that, but then when they, it was, it was crazy when they signed Brandon Powell because it was just like, Oh, there's a guy that does what they signed him to do already on the team. So what does that mean? And you just kind of look at how, you know, they let go of Amir Smith-Marset last year to get Jalen Rager, and they really only used him as a, as a punt return guy. And so what he scored one touchdown, and that was what on like a, a, a gadget run play last year, um, which was, which was nice, but is that what you really want him to do, you know? Um, and then I also look at um, Ross Blacklock. They they got him last year before the season started. It was interesting. He took a pay cut uh, in March to stay with the Vikings. But then last year, I don't know if it was just he didn't get a chance to learn the scheme well enough or whatever, but he was a healthy scratch in the last seven games last year. So I saw him – at camp last week, you know, just kind of running around, you know, doing this thing. And I don't know. I, I don't really know what, what the, the deal is going to be. You know, Bullard got a lot of starts last year and got a lot of playing time. So I don't know that he would be a guy that I would think would be in jeopardy as much as Blacklock. Just, I don't know. He doesn't seem to have the most um, juice. Now he could have a good camp and, you know, make his way onto the field a little bit more, but he played in 11 games, and like I said, that, those last seven, I saw him wearing his chain and, and just wearing – he had some really nice shoes, and, you know, the drip was was dripping, but I, I didn't see him in any games. Um, hey, just real the, quick, just because just we're talking about the roster and bubble guys, I want to throw yeah. something at you guys too. As we kind of dissect this and think about this for the next four or five weeks, last year, though, they kept two quarterbacks, right? They cut Kellen Mond. This year, they're going to mm -hmm. keep three quarterbacks unless something crazy happens. So that's another roster spot that has to come from one of these positional groups. And when I look at the other positional groups, they kept five running backs last year. They're going to keep five running backs this year when you include C.J. Ham. They're going to keep four safeties again this year. They're not going to cut a guy like Josh Metellus, right, or Cam Bynum or mm -hmm. Lewis Seen. Right. You go through these position groups, I don't know where this extra player is going to come from. They only kept five receivers last year. What are they only going to keep four? Probably not. Oh, three tight ends. Got to have at least three tight ends, and that means you probably cut a guy like Nick Muse or Johnny Munt. Ten offensive linemen. That's the only position I can come to where I think, okay, maybe a guy like Vidarian Lowe, Schlotman, Oliudo, Chris Reed, any of those guys may be in the mix. But for sure, if they keep three quarterbacks, which we assume they will, one of these uh, other positions is going to have to yeah. you know, get cut by one, which is pretty crazy. Great, great uh, point there, Luke. I think offensive line, you're right. Probably some like <clears throat> Blake Brandle being able to play multiple positions. That might be the thing that saves them a spot mm -hmm. if he can move around. How about this? If Josh Metellus is playing nickel as much as we think, 
Maybe they cut it. A, maybe they cut a corner. Jawan, I'm going Jawan. Yeah, Jawan, because uh, they're not going to cut Jay Ward unless he's just no. absolutely lost. So it's really, I mean, they kept six cornerbacks to your point, Sam, last year: Byron Murphy, Caleb Evans, Makai Blackman, Andrew Booth, Jay Ward. And then maybe, yeah, Ward. maybe you keep Josh Metellus in at Ward, Nickel, Ward screws it up because you got to keep Ward. And that means you have, to, and then you've still got Blackman, Murphy, Booth. Evans, Booth, and Williams. Yeah. I still think you could, I still think you could shed maybe Williams, but that's okay. a, that's a big if that's yeah. a big if, um, yeah, no, it's a tough exercise. It's a really tough exercise. Um, on the whole black lock thing, I was just going to say that, that always felt weird to me because they traded for him two picks and yeah. they got him in the first day. And I remember I asked uh, K- KOC, I said, Hey, do you, cause remember they got rid of Armin Watts and people were like, what, why? And you assume that, Oh, well, they had a plan. They wanted to get a cheaper guy in or something. And, uh, and Blacklock comes along and I said, KOC, Hey, yo, Kevin is, Ross going to be your starter this year or, or is he going to be part of a rotation? And he said, yeah, well, you know, we really like guys like Jonathan Bullard to, to step up. And yep, sure enough, Jonathan Bullard was their guy. So they didn't really like Blacklock to start from the beginning, yet they traded for him and then didn't play him. Um, and the same with Rager. Like those were just two moves that needlessly wasted draft capital um, to get players that kind of were flubs in the NFL. Just very curious, very curious to me why those two moves got made. Um, We've also got kind of this roster problem, guys. The Vikings in 2021 drafted 10 players and they had five picks in the first three rounds. So you would expect that a draft that size would lead to a handful of players that are coming into their own in 2023 that they're kind of like, that's where their depth is coming from is a big draft class back in 2021. Well, Christian Derisaw was a hit. That was a great pick in the first round. After that, of the remaining nine players, seven are gone from this team. Just two years later, seven are gone. Cam Bynum remains. Good pick. Kenny Wong Wu remains. Seems like a good pick, though he hasn't done a lot on offense. I feel, Luke, and this is really meant meant for you to to, j- to just go because I know you love the draft. Tell us where the Vikings went wrong here because that would have been clutch to have a 10-man draft class produce at least some backup players and special teams players for this roster this year. And that's why you have guys like Ross, Bla- Ross Blacklock on this roster when you didn't really hit many players at all two years ago. It's just from a broad overview, you mentioned five picks of the first three rounds they had, let's see, four, five, six, seven, nine picks in rounds three through five. It wasn't just the four third rounders. They had three fourths and two fifths. They had 11 picks in total in 2021. The year before, do you remember in 2020, the Justin Jefferson draft? They had 15 picks. So, I mean, just in a, like, a general broad overview, love or hate Rick Spielman and his time here and what he did. That dude could wheel and deal like no other GM. I mean, he could amass extra picks on day three specifically. I know it ended up becoming a joke and a meme by the end, but um, it was actually pretty impressive. I think what kind of screwed him over towards the end was, and I'm all for getting as many lottery picks as possible, but in 2020, you're coming off that playoff season, right? Remember, they went into New Orleans and beat the Saints on the Mm -hmm. road. Now you're going into that offseason with a playoff caliber roster, And so you just don't physically have room for 15 draft picks. It means your roster is already pretty good, pretty stacked at most positions. Why are you bringing in 15 draft picks? So he probably should have been trading those picks for even more future picks. You know, you trade a a fourth this year for a future third. You do that a couple years in a row. All of a sudden, you got some premium top 50 kind of capital. But unfortunately, and I think we see this happen a lot, is – You're coming off the down year in 2020. You miss out on the playoffs. Now the GM and the head coach, they start to feel a little bit of heat from the owners. You know, it's year eight, I think, at that point in the regime. And they start to feel some pressure to come away now with an absolute home run draft because, I mean, that's where you build your team, right? Not through free agency, but through the draft. And the problem was, if you just go back, 
I mean, pull up the 2021 draft class. Unless you're talking about guys in the first two rounds, top 60 picks, it's a lot of nothing from rounds three and on, right where the Vikings had all their ammo. And we can cherry pick. You know, there's a few guys they could have drafted. Amon Ross St. Brown in the fourth round. Ramondre Stevenson, I guess. But unfortunately, I think just call it bad luck or whatever you want. Spielman, I think, just stockpiled all those picks in the wrong draft class. I mean, just knowing his track record and and the seven drafts we watched before that, I can almost guarantee you normally he wouldn't have selected every pick like he did had he not started to feel maybe a little heat from the ownership and even, you know, the media that his job was maybe starting to get on the line, right? The leash was shortening. You know, if he said, well, if this is my last year here, I'm going to go out swinging. I'm not trading all these picks I worked so hard for just so the next guy can capitalize on them. And I think just bottom line, they got Derisai, as you mentioned, looks like a 10-year potential pro bowler. They got some guys like Cam Bynum and Kenny and maybe Pat Jones. But- yeah, I screwed up. Jones is here too. Jones yeah, they got Pat here. Jones, the the only you know third rounder of the four that ended up sticking to the board. But unless they would have packaged multiple day two and day three picks, right? Some of those third and fourth and fifth round picks, and moved up for somebody like you know Creed Humphrey or Asante Samuel Jr. I'm talking about middle to late second round guys. There just wasn't a ton of real NFL starting talent in those middle rounds in that specific 2021 draft class. And again, it wasn't just the Vikings. It was a large majority of those teams that swung and missed in those uh, middle rounds and even in the later rounds as well. It is what it is. It's unfortunate, obviously. But again, I don't think he makes all those picks to begin with. And I think he sets himself up a little bit more for 2022 had he not known that his job was on the line going into that season. You know what I mean? And plus, sometimes too, think about this. It takes three years to really start to figure it all out for some of these guys. So we're so quick to judge these draft classes, but who knows? Watch a guy like Pat Jones maybe do some damage this year and and etch himself into a starting role with Zadarius gone now. And all of a sudden, now that you got Derisaw, Bynum, Kenne, and then maybe Pat Jones flashes a little bit more than we're used to, all of a sudden maybe we look at that class just a little bit differently. I don't know, but certainly, yeah, initially – it stings coming away with so little, despite having 11 picks from that class. Yeah, there's Luke talking us off a ledge here with uh, with my panic. Well, Reggie, you probably what date did you move to the Twin Cities? So I got here the weekend of the uh, abysmal Cardinals loss in week two. Oh, the Greg like Joseph. 2020. Yeah. Oh, yeah. ouch. Yeah. The, yeah. the wait a I minute, heard. there's 15 seconds on the clock. Why aren't we trying to run one or two more plays here? Just get every yard we can, right? Yeah, none of that, 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 none of that stuff made sense at the end, and it was pretty fitting when he missed that field goal. It was just yeah. like, all right, well. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, so Reg gets here. He experiences that. He's diving into the Vikings roster. He's like, all right, let's get to know these guys. Kellen Mond, quarterback of the future, Chaz Surratt. Future Eric Kendricks, Wyatt Davis, future offensive line. Oh, they're all gone. They're almost all gone. Bye-bye. Um, yeah, yeah. That that like you would have just loved to have them on the roster now, just for you know, kind of the optimism of having like a third year player that's just starting to figure things out. Kevin O'Connell, I think, to his credit, I really think he tried to make it work with Kellen Mond. Like I really do. He gave him every opportunity in the preseason last year and all that. Like he, you know, maybe he doesn't draft Jaron Hall this year. If Kellen kind of, you know, takes another step, he made the decision to go get Nick Mullins. Like how bad was it last year that he was just like, yeah, we, we got, you know, we're, we got two guys battling for that backup spot. And he was just like, you know what? I don't like either of these guys. Let's, let's, uh, we're gonna get Mullins, and uh, we'll 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 get David Blau in here on the practice squad. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> it's like, all right, cool, yeah, that's what we'll do. Cool. And so I I think it's I think that whole thing is tough, but I okay. Patrick Jones showed some flashes last year in a few games, and you know maybe he is a little bit of a late bloomer. And when you take a guy in that round that late. You know, you kind of hope to develop that guy. And I remember talking to Quasey, and he talked about how much he felt like Mike Smith is like the best in the biz at developing talent. He's like, he's the best there is. I was so glad we were able to get him. 
and uh, we were watching him kind of coach up some of the some of the guys. And so uh, you look at him, you look at Chris Rumpf and and what they've been able to do developing guys in their last uh, year here. And I do think that maybe Patrick Jones could take a step forward. Now, I don't know if he's double digit sack type of a guy, but I could see him maybe at eight, nine sacks or something like that this upcoming year. Um, when you you give him a chance to do that, because like I said, he did show some flashes last year. And if you got that happening with him, you got Darisaw who could, you know, distinguish himself as one of the top left tackles in the game. And you look at Kene and he continues to develop. Maybe he does a little bit more as a running back this year and maybe not just as a return guy. I know that's only a few guys out of the, the stocked, you know, class that you had. And then Cam Bynum continues to take a step forward as well. Um, I say it's not bad. I, I say it's okay. not necessarily that much of a disaster, Sam. All right. Some positive spin. I like it. I like the positivity. I can be Mr. Rain Cloud over here. Uh, in closing, we got a late question from Bro Yules. I want 30 seconds each. Would we rather have an eyes bleedingly bad 2023 season without Hunter or Kirk or have to trade multiple first round picks next next year for a guy like Bo Nix. So Reggie, no Kirk, no Daniil, you tank, you get a QB or have to trade future picks next year to get that QB. Why Bo Nix? Why Bo Nix? That, that's what that's I'm asking. That's so random. Why Bo Nix? Like, I'm not trying to tie our future to Bo Nix in 2023 yeah. necessarily. Yeah, like, you know, he, he showed some promise, but, you know, he, he kind of got ran out of Auburn, you know? Like, I, I don't know if I necessarily – why are you trading? At first it was trading multiple picks for Quinn Ewers. We we took that question. Yeah. And now we're talking about trading multiple – can I pick C, none of the above? <laughs> can I, I saw, Hey, that? McShay uh, mocked – J.J. McCarthy to the Vikings next year with pick. Come 20. on, man! Come on, man! No, I don't. I don't. Buy I don't him watch either. college football, so you you got to tell me. You got to. No, tell me I don't buy him either. I mean, they beat the Buckeyes two years in a row. That's pretty exciting. McCarthy's a dual threat guy, but I just don't see him seriously being a guy. I mean, he could surprise me, and maybe he's, you know, maybe he's the next coming of of you know. The, the the Chargers quarterback, you know, because I didn't think much of him either coming out. And then he's just setting the world on fire now as well. So I don't know. McCarthy has a really strong arm, dual threat guy. But I don't know that that's a guy that I'm just like, yeah, that's who I want. But if he comes out and has a remarkable year again, and maybe they beat the, the Buckeyes again this year, then maybe, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if the eyes bleedingly bad season. I, I I just don't believe necessarily that un unless there is, unless you can ensure that you're gonna you're gonna tank, you're gonna be the worst, you're gonna get the number one pick for Caleb Williams. Boy, it is uh, it's a dicey proposition to. And, to and I'm with that. you on that, Sam. Even if you lose Kirk, even if you lose your starting quarterback, a top universal tw top twelve quarterback in the league, and Daniil Hunter. Are you one of the worst two teams in the NFL? I don't think so. I think there's no. still too much talent on that roster. I, I really do. Yeah. That obviously makes things a little bit tricky in this exercise as well. But it depends what you get for him, too. I mean, do you get draft picks for Daniil Hunter? Did you get a first rounder? Did you get a second and a third for Kirk? Can I package that kind of stuff up? But it's going to be interesting. Let me ask you this as we get out of here. How many wins do you need to see from Kirk Cousins this year to feel good about another extension going into next offseason? Do you need double digit wins? Do you need a playoff win? What do you need, you need like to two see? Two playoff wins. You need two, two playoff, playoff wins. wins. Yeah. I, I yeah, think I agree with that. I think it's I agree with that. Yeah. It's gonna take a lot. Yeah. Yeah. NFC championship game appearance, like improvement off of last year, and yeah, continued durability. It's gonna take a lot. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and and I think that and even then, Kirk has said he's not talking contract until March. By March, you know what else is happening? Other teams are offering him contracts. Right. And uh, I'm not sure that Quazy is interested in matching a three-year, $120 million deal. Mm -hmm. So it, I, I'm preparing myself for this to be the last Kirk year. Still uh, not thrilled about that $28 million dead cap hit, but may have to live with it. Um, Reggie, mm -hmm. 
What's going on at CARE tonight? Hey, we're getting ready for the NBA draft. Uh, there's been rumblings that um, the Timberwolves, after trading away the farm last year, they could be trying to trade back into the first round. We, uh, we had Julia over at Timberwolves HQ today talking to Tim Connolly about his pre-draft thoughts. Um, so we'll, we'll hear from him. we got the Wild there also getting ready for the draft as well. The Lynx. They got the Sparks number this year, man. That That is uh, the third win against the Sparks already this season. Haven't really beat too many other teams, but they keep beating the Sparks. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, the Aurora in action tonight as well. They um, are still trying to stay undefeated. This season might even be better than last season. So uh, plenty, plenty going on. And hopefully the Twins can stop this uh, three-game losing streak. Um it was interesting listening to Rocco Baldelli last night. He just sounded like a guy in despair. And so he's just like, I'm hopeful that because th this is just not who we are. I, I don't believe they'll have this bad of a performance again. And it's just like, all right, you from your mouth to God's ear. So we're talking about all of that tonight. I don't care. Hey, any I wild cards, any any dicey propositions you guys have for the NBA draft here coming up? Any Anything you want to call out or predict your first three picks, anything like that? It looks I like it's going to be worse. I'm going to go, hey, big move. limb, big limb, guys. There's this French prospect that I think <laughs> oh, is going to go number one. Not a one. Europe guy. So yeah. it looks like it looks like Charlotte has kind of made up their mind that they want Brandon Miller, so it looks like it'll be – Wimby, Miller, and then Scoot. 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 G League guy, right? That's yeah, all. I, he, yeah. He yeah. did the he did the, you know, I'm gonna take this year out of high school and play pro ball instead of going to college. So you know who's gonna be the most overdrafted player in NBA history next year? Bronny. Bronny oh. is going to be so overdrafted because of the marketing possibilities, mm -hmm. maybe the possible landing of LeBron, mm -hmm. right? Like he is teams are going to take him so much more highly than I think he probably should be going. That's my NBA uh, hot a draft hot take of the day. Everybody asked for it, and I gave it to you. There it is. Uh, <laughs> Reggie Wilson, he's at Reggie Wilson TV on Twitter. Luke Inman, at Luke underscore Spinman, NFL Draft Buzz newsletter author. I'm Sam Ekstrom. I'm at Sam Ekstrom, part of the Ron Johnson Show, Minnesota Sports Rankum, and the Minnesota Football Party. Back tomorrow with Arif Hassan and Luke Braun and Ron Johnson. Until then, so long. You're on Lockdown Sports Minnesota. Peace. Be blessed. Spread love.